In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a digital illustration of Goku. That's coming up next. I'm going to start by turning on mirror or symmetry painting, and then I'll establish the body height by sketching a circle and duplicating it eight times. We'll go ahead and dim that, and then we'll sketch over it on another layer. We'll divide that top circle in half, horizontally and vertically, and we'll use that to draw in our head. The eyes will be on that center horizontal line. The torso will be about two heads high, and the legs will be about four heads high. The arms can extend right about down to that crotch line, and then the elbows will be positioned right around that line at the waist. Now we'll go ahead and just sketch in some of the clothing details here. And this is just going to be a sketch, so don't worry about it being perfect. We'll have a chance to refine it later and clean up the lines. For now, just focus on getting all of the pieces blocked in, and then if it's not in proportion, we can always transform it later or redraw it or clean it up. I'm going to start sketching in some of the anatomy on the face, and I'll just clean up some of these details a little bit here and there. I'm going back and forth between just a default basic brush, something that would work well for inking or sketching, and the eraser. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off my paint symmetry because now I want to be able to draw asymmetrically. So I'm going to sketch in the hair here. So this hair is covering the face, and then we'll just try to estimate how high the hair is. If we don't get this right, we can always adjust it later. And then just try to concentrate on each individual spike. If the hair is too tall or too short, just select it and transform it to make it the right height. I'll do a little bit more work on the face and just clean that up a bit more. If I ever need to draw anything symmetrically, I can turn my mirror painting mode on, but for the most part, from here on out, I'm going to be drawing without symmetry on. Now I want to indicate where I'm going to have some shadow areas. These aren't necessarily going to be outlines, they're just going to be areas where I'm going to add different levels of shading. And just spend some time cleaning up your sketch and try to get it as good as you can. We can always tweak it a little bit as we're adding our ink later. So now let's go ahead and create a new layer for our ink. And we'll go ahead and just change our pencil layer to blue, that way we can see it easier. And then we'll just ink over it with, again, just a nice smooth ink brush that's fully opaque. If you want to add a little bit of smoothing or stabilization to your brush, you can do that. Don't be afraid to use your eraser, and don't be afraid to use undos, and then just redraw the line. Just take your time and make sure that these lines are nice and clean. And don't try to make everything perfectly symmetrical, because a little bit of asymmetry looks good. You can flip your canvas horizontally, and sometimes that makes it easier to draw certain angles and certain lines. So if you're having trouble, just flip your canvas. Now for the most part, I'm trying to use one consistent line width, with the exception of there's a few details here on the pectorals and on the face. Those will be slightly thinner lines. You can see those on the ears. So you do want to vary your line width a bit, but that's mostly a stylistic choice. I'll go ahead and start inking here on the rest of the body now. Now you don't have to follow your sketch exactly, just consider your sketch kind of a rough draft or a framework. You can see that I extended the leg and I made it a bit thicker, where the pants stick out a bit more, so that they cover up the edges of the thumb. So I'm not following my sketch exactly, I'm just using my sketch kind of as a skeleton, and then I'm improving upon it with these ink lines. And I'm going to ink some of these wrinkles on the bottom of the pants here. Now this is an area where I feel like I might have made the boots a little bit too short, so what I can do is I can just make a selection just of the bottom of the legs and then transform that. And that moves the bottom edge of the pants up and then I can just extend the line for the boots to make them longer. And that's the beauty of working digitally. I'll add just a few more little detail lines here to the hair. And then we can start filling in some of these black areas. Now really the best way to do that is to go ahead and just trace around where you want to fill in with black. And then just make sure it's a nice closed shape with no gaps in it. Then you can select your paint bucket and you can just fill in that center part. Now I'm going to switch to my eraser and then just clean up the hair a bit so it's nice and sharp. I'm just going back and forth between the brush and the eraser. If the application you're using has keyboard shortcuts for the brush and the eraser, you might want to go ahead and use those because that'll make it easier to switch back and forth quickly. I'm going to go ahead and just transform my sketch too so that it matches up with the ink lines that I transformed. And then I'll clean up the wrinkles in the pants a bit because I'm not happy with how they look. Again, you want to use the inking phase as an opportunity to improve upon your drawing. I'm going to go ahead and just sketch in these little details on the boot here. And then if Goku's too thin or too thick, you can kind of stretch him out overall by free transforming your lines. Might extend his legs a little bit, so he's just a little bit taller, and maybe extend the hair a bit. I was a little sloppy on the boots there, so I'm just going to redraw that part, make it look a little bit better. The head feels a little bit short too, so I'll just transform that and make that a bit taller, and just play with the proportion until I'm happy with it. Now, I apologize ahead of time if this doesn't end up looking exactly like Goku, because I know there's people out there who are really into Dragon Ball Z. 
I used to watch it a little bit, but I wouldn't say I'm a Dragon Ball Z expert by any means, so forgive me if I miss something here. Now it's time to add color, and I'm going to make sure that I'm adding each individual color on its own layer, and that those layers stay beneath my line work. So I went ahead and filled in the hair with gray. I'll add just a few highlights on the hair here with a lighter gray. And I can start filling in the face with a skin color as well as the arms. And I want to make sure that that skin color is separate from that gray layer for the hair. I'll make sure that the eyes are on a separate layer and the orange gi. Now I recommend doing your color this way and keeping it separate rather than using the paint bucket. If there's a way you can use the paint bucket and keep the paint that you're filling in separate, then that's okay. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just painting right along the edges first and then filling in the center of that with the paint bucket. And that tends to work the best and is the fastest. You can also use your selection tools to create a selection and then fill in that selection. Some things like these little details on the boot, these are just easier just to paint in without worrying about selections or painting along the edge. And I know I said it, but I'll say it again, keep all your color layers separate, even on the boots there. Now you can make some exceptions, like on the hair, I combine those two grays because I'm not really worried about keeping them separate. But for here, for the shadows on the face, I want to go ahead and make that layer separate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that layer to a composite method or a blend mode of multiply. And when I do that, if I paint with that same skin color I was using, it's just going to make that color darker as I paint. And that way, if I keep those layers separate, I'll have more control over those colors. And if I'm not happy with that shading, I don't have to repaint all of the skin. It's just a much more efficient way of working. Now in this composition, our lighting is coming from the top right, so our shadows will be on the left side. I'm going to go ahead and add another new layer, and I'm going to set it to a multiply blend mode. And I'll go ahead and paint in some shadows. You could use that same skin color, or you could tweak it and you could make it a little bit darker or a little bit desaturated if you wanted to. But I'm just kind of trying to keep this darker shadow more or less within that middle shadow that I put in before. Now basically I'm just going to repeat that process with all of the other components here, such as the blue shirt. I'll go ahead and just add layers of darker and darker colors and build it up. I'll go ahead and get the boots here and add a shadow to those. If you're enjoying this tutorial so far, make sure to click that subscribe button. I have a lot more digital painting tutorials like this. Now when I'm adding this shading, I'm trying to think about the three-dimensional form of the body. I know where my light source is, and if I think about this body as primitive shapes, which are what we kind of sketched in earlier, cylinders and spheres and cubes, then it's really easy to shade those shapes but it gets a little more complicated where there's wrinkles and things like that. So just look at the wrinkle lines that you drew for your line art and make sure that your shadows kind of fit those directions and those contours. I'll go ahead and add an additional layer here set to multiply and I'll add some darker shadows on the gi. I'll add a few lighter highlights on the face and on the skin, just in a couple of places. I'll go ahead and add some shading to the boots as well. I'll use a yellow that's a tiny bit darker and shift it a tiny bit toward orange. Now I'll add in a background here on a separate layer. I'm just airbrushing in a little bit of a glow there. I'll go ahead and add a few highlights on the gi as well that are kind of a lighter yellow orange. That way it'll look like it's maybe reflecting some of that environment color. And then I'm just going to zoom in really close and just clean things up because chances are I overpainted in some areas or I left some gaps or made some little mistakes that I don't see from far away. And so I'm just cleaning up a bunch of little tiny areas. If I wanted to clean up the shading on the pants, I can as well. And at this point, if you feel like merging your shading layers together so that all of your shading on your gi is all on one layer, then you could do that. You could have all your skin layers merged together as well. That makes it a little bit easier just to sample and switch between colors when you're cleaning it up. I'm going to make the eyes wider as well because they were a bit too small. And with that, we have a finished drawing of Goku. Now, this took me about two hours to complete. It's not bad for my first ever drawing of Goku. If you enjoyed this tutorial, go on over to patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten and join me on my mission to create more digital art tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.